Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today we're having a special Mass. Uh, it's a Mass, a special prayer for peace. And we're having this today, and this is in honor of those that um, have supported us through the Society of Little Flower. And we also have a special intention today for employment for Marius, Jonas, and Dana. Coming together as God's family, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who constantly raise up in your church new examples of virtue, grant that we may follow so closely in the footsteps of Bishop St. Alphonsus in his zeal for souls as to attain the same rewards that are his in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fifth month of the fourth year, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azur, from Gibeon, said to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years, I will restore to this place all the vessels of the temple of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place to Babylon. And I will bring back to this place Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the exiles of Judah who went to Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon." The prophet Jeremiah answered the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people assembled in the house of the Lord and said, Amen. Thus may the Lord do. May he fulfill the things you have prophesied by bringing the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles back from Babylon to this place. But now listen to what I'm about to state in your hearing and the hearing of all the people. From of all the prophets who were before you and me prophesied war, woe and pestilence against many land and mighty kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesied peace is recognized as true sent by the Lord only when his prophetic prediction is fulfilled. Thereupon the prophet Hananiah took the yoke from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it and said in the presence of all the people, Thus says the Lord, Even so, within two years, I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from off the neck of all the nations. 
At that, the prophet Jeremiah went away. Sometime after the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go tell Hananiah this, thus says the Lord. By breaking a wooden yoke, you forge an iron yoke. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. The, iron, the yoke of iron I will place in the necks of all these nations serving Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. Even the beasts of the field I give him. To the prophet Hananiah, the prophet Jeremiah said, Hear this, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, and you have raised false confidence in these people. For this, says the Lord, I will dispatch you from the face of the earth. This very year you shall die, because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. That same year, in the seventh month, Hananiah, the prophet, died. The word of the Lord. Lord, teach me your statutes. Remove me from the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. Take not the word of truth from your mouth, for in your ordinances is my hope. Let those turn to me who fear you and acknowledge your decrees. Let my heart be perfect in your statutes, and I be not put to shame. Sinners wait to destroy me, but I pay heed to your decrees. From your ordinances, I turn not away, for you have instructed me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. He said this to them. There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. First of all, today we're celebrating a special Mass for Peace. And as you know, throughout our world, there are many different places in which we are experiencing uh, violence, uh, terrorist acts, and especially for the people of the Ukraine. But one of the things that we also are celebrating today is the uh, memorial of St. Alphonsus Liguori, who is the founder of the Redemptorist Order. And he lived in the late 1600s, early 1700s in Italy, in Naples. And he was trained as a lawyer, but after he lost a case, he decided being a lawyer wasn't for him, and he decided to instead become a priest. But his family wasn't too excited about it because 
Uh, they were from a noble family, but it was impoverished at the time in which he lived. But he ended up becoming one of the great saints. As we hear, he's a bishop and also a doctor of the church as well. And one of the things that he's known for in the greatest way is his writing on moral theology. So he is the patron saint of confessors. And just to briefly give you some idea, he decided to live his life serving those that are most in need and most humble. He lived at a time when Jansenism was uh, raging, and it continued. This was something, as we might remember, that in Therese's time still continued to be a problem. And basically, the problem is that people didn't recognize the mercy of God. And even as a confessor, he had a simple statement. If people come to you to confession, uh, the idea is not to scare them, but to bring souls to our Lord. So in other words, the way that uh, someone should be treated is in a way that's very kind and loving. Because one of his mottos was to do all things in Christ. He also was known for being an amazing preacher as well. And one of the things that he said, if uh, a poor old woman can't understand me, then I'm doing something wrong. So he wanted his message to be for everyone. That was his goal. But he is also known because he had a vision of Mary during a time that he was serving the poor who had experienced an earthquake in Italy. So he was one of those people that was really involved in so many things. But his great contribution is, first of all, being a confessor and recognizing how important the sacrament of confession is. When we listen to today's first reading, what we are hearing is essentially a false prophet. Hananiah is basically saying that the Nebuchadnezzar is going to change his mind and send the people back to Judah, Jerusalem. This, as we know, doesn't happen right away. And Jeremiah is obviously very disappointed in this message. And so what he does is he leaves, he goes and prays about it, and he has a vision that you might be getting rid of the wooden yoke, but there's going to be an iron yoke instead. In other words, uh, if you listen to false prophets, you're going to pay a price for it. Later on this week, we're going to hear more from Jeremiah, so I don't want to give away what's going to happen, but it, uh, it ends well, just so you know. And... Um, but one of the things that we see here, it's important, and it was uh, done very well, is we hear that uh, Hananiah dies. So that's he, for basically, it's seen as being punishment for being a false prophet, if you want to see what's going on there. But now when we listen to today's gospel, what we hear is that our Lord is multiplying loaves and fish for the people. And this is another example. We hear this in all the different Gospels, and it's told in different ways. But one of the wonderful things about it is this particular Gospel says 5,000 men, not counting women and children. Some Gospels just say 5,000 men. So we can see there was a vast number of people present at this multiplication of loaves. One of the things about the multiplication of loaves is, first of all, it, it, pre, uh, it pre-shadows the Eucharist, so it helps us to understand that the gift that God's going to give us in the Eucharist is far going to surpass anything that we could imagine. But it also is a sign of our Lord meeting our needs, meeting our needs at a deepest level within our lives. And so when we come to Mass, Hopefully, we don't just come without any thoughts in our minds. You might be, that might be the case, but it doesn't have to be. What we could do when we come to Mass is to bring our intentions, our longings, what we desire, what we ask the Lord to help us with. Um, for example, 
At Mass, we remember those who have gone before us. At Mass, we remember those who are sick. Bring your own intentions with you as a way of recognizing that our Lord hears all of our prayers. And there is no better place to gather together and to pray than in the Eucharist itself. During Vatican II, it was re referred to as the summit of our faith. Our Lord desires to give us every good gift. He desires to help us in whatever troubles that we have. The gift of St. Alphonsus Liguori is that he recognized the importance of being compassionate in confession. He helped to bring souls to Christ. That was his goal. That's what he wanted to do. And he did it very well. But he also had a great devotion to Mary, our mother, as well. And one of the things that we know as Catholics, and it's a gift that we have, is that Mary also listens to our prayers. We can pray to Mary. She intercedes for us to her son. We have a great gift of grace within our church, but we also have within ourselves a recognition that our Lord hears us. Our Lord listens to us. Our Lord knows our longings within our hearts. Let us recognize that when we come to the Eucharist, we bring all that we are as a gift to the Lord. The bread and wine that we offer are signs of us, are signs of who we are as people, signs of our work, signs of all that we do in order to recognize the great gift that we have been given through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. Let us pray, first of all, for Francis, our Pope, for bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for the intentions of Pope Francis, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for peace in our world and, and also in our own lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for those who are poor, for those who do not have enough food to eat, for those who do not have an opportunity for education or access to clean drinking water, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for those who are sick, for those who are in need of God's healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for our special intentions, those that we bring before our Father in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord and let us remember our beloved dead, those who have gone before us, that they may be one with Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord Father, we bring all our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them through St. Alphonsus Liguori. We ask our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. We come for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Be pleased, O Lord, to enkindle our hearts with this celestial fire of your spirit, 
Just as you grant it that St. Alphonsus should celebrate these mysteries and by them offer himself to you as a holy sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Alphonsus, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life in the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a safe sign of peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Of Christ.
Let us pray. O God, who gave St. Alphonsus to be faithful steward and preacher of this great mystery, grant that your faithful may receive it often and in receiving it praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us offer a prayer to Mary, our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady Mount Carmel, St. Therese of Lisieux, go in the peace of Christ, the Mass is ended. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.